talk about the survival paradigm, right? Human middle class uh, humanity has gone past the survival paradigm. We survival is no longer our um, our prerogative. Our prerogative is comfort and maintaining well, no, the status quo. Physical right? physical survival is no physical longer. survival. Yes, yeah. that's great as well because yeah. it's almost like life isn't just survival. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome uh, and welcome to the newest show on our channel called This Week in Humanity. And with me today is my very good friend, Roger Byram. Roger, how are you? Hey guys, really good, really good. Not feeling um, weak now, in my humanity at all. <laughs> uh, Roger and I in 2018, I think it was, we had a, had a big series called Consumerocracy um, that was all about the future of democracy, the future of governance and digitization and governance as well. So um, I've been really, really keen to get Roger on the channel and now I finally managed to convince him to take part in a, an ongoing series. So Roger, we welcome. Thank you for agreeing to come along. Yeah, man, back in the fold. Yeah, I was going to say so many things since we've last like touched base and had the amount of things that I, especially as coming on board once you already had that idea for consumerocracy, is uh, the amount of things that I learned then that I was like, was like, oh yeah, no, this sort of pans out. This sort of makes sense. This is a, a good through line. I can see why this is going to happen. And even in five years, the amount of things that have come through, like the intense division between neo tribes and all this, um, the uh, like how automation and AI now is cutting us further and further apart how no person will ever see the same ad as the person next to them as of like arguably now but in the next little bit like that uh really fine crystallized uh targeting coming through yeah uh, yeah yeah you know what really good <laughs> from that time was when we in one of the episodes was around um digital warfare and we spoke oh, yeah. about how the like uh, there was an article in the nineties from a lady named Nikki Crit around how um, like the male and female have same levels of aggressions, but actually the yeah, way they yeah. manifest the aggression changes substantially. And it, I think it was yeah. less than a year later, you and I were at a, um, a talk by John Height, and the entire talk and his whole book were actually around the coddling of the American mind and how it actually was having. Yeah. Um, and uh, like extraordinary impact on young women, and I was just like, my God, we just, yeah, yeah, it was we, a, it we was actually really were just mentioning that. Yeah, it's yeah. great. He's, uh, I think he's got another book coming out um, this really? year as well, which is a long because there's he's done a lot of great stuff um, since then. Even uh, the Atlantic has a few things I was reading the other day, but yeah, the like specifically teenage girls and what's it uh, like social media is like this. <laughs> basically uh, a human experiment on particularly yeah. teenage girls on everyone but like very very intense stuff yeah um, it's been really crazy but i um I, I guess the you know things are moving quite quickly and i remember at the end of the consumerocracy series one, one of the last lines in that series was like and all this is happening right this second until artificial intelligence, and then that's going to change everything again. And we'll do a series yeah, yeah. where that starts to happen. And yeah. um, of course, the world's changed quite a bit in six years. Yeah, and we're very, we're very sudden, excited about what we're calling AI is just massive language models. And then looking towards what's coming next, I guess, is really because we and and we've spoken we've spoken about this out, outside um, about how what we're calling artificial intelligence and more importantly and this always comes down for me to be about how the, like the the story that we're told and what the even the the use of the word ai and what it means to the middle of society i guess to the bulk of humanity and it not only is that as is tradition we it's been posed as a as a threat like that's what it is the mm -hmm. threat to to jobs like it's it, it, it's a uh, it's like any tool like it's such a, a bizarre like technocratic capitalist realist like ludditeism thing where they're like oh it's gonna take your jobs it's gonna it, it's gonna reduce the total workload of humanity how bad a plan is that you're like i, I don't know man only if we have like these intense like pillars within society that have um yeah 
the power to exploit that, you know. Well, this is something you and I spoke about again back in, in 2018 was that mm. I think like where, you know, at that point we were starting the fourth industrial revolution. I'd say we're now fully blown into the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We was, we were saying there has never been an industrial revolution that didn't end in more jobs than it started with. So even though. Well, exactly. It's, yeah. Happened. Yeah, well, that's sort of what it is, right? It's a disruption to the way things are done. And we both um, dabble in music as well. And I, I guess art, like, as a wider thing. And that's, it's funny that that almost was the introduction to AI or, like, just, just they're just massive neural nets, right? Like, we're just pouring information in and then just sucking out outputs. But that was the, um, what was it, DALI? And then um, before yeah. GPT, which is now covers everything. But that DALI uh, being able to synthesize art from prompts uh, and the conversation around that, about how it's gonna, uh, it takes money from artists, it uh, makes it harder for them to compete in a world saturated by easily created, um, easily synthesized, um, art or entities yeah. um content whatever you want to call it uh but it, it is just another tool right that's a, that's exactly what it is and it's a big tool and it's it, it it's an amazing thing to be able to utilize but it's in the same way that like it's changed learning and education the internet like our access to this like massive font of knowledge or well, of information knowledge wisdom whatever um however far along that spectrum you want to point it but uh, memory is no longer as important to us because we've outsourced that. We, we've outsourced um, needing to remember information and facts. And now what is such a more important skill, and if you were in our mid-30s and you look at someone who's in their mid-20s and then someone who's only 15, their ability to access information and find it and also synthesize that information is so much greater than ours uh, ever has been, you know? And so that's yeah. just... Unless you ask someone in their 60s and then they'll tell you it's worse. Well, that's true. That's true. And <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to, inside of me, the more heart, the more beats that your heart has, the more you want, you, the more you think things shouldn't change, I think is, unless you're, unless you're sort of pretty, pretty lucky. It's like, it's just like the power structure within you. You're like, no, no, we're, we're maintaining this. This is, we've got to a status quo. Here we are. But, um, well, that's yeah, part of the, uh, the like tools, learning. Just, I was going to say those tools. Uh, it's exactly the same. Like we didn't have any, we didn't have any train drivers before the coal revolution. Like and then we had train drivers. That's they, w these yeah. are our new train drivers, right? The the people who can use those models and that's the thing. We're really only the to this first basic concept like algorithmic language model um, intelligence. Uh, it's like you say, we're in full swing in part of the, the revolution, but this is the digital the revolution, right? And now we're in the middle and this first AI, is, um, it's fascinating what people are doing and you see, you already see ways that you could never think of doing it and it's happening in real time. Like it's, GPT's only been around, like public facing, consumer level GPT's not been around for two years, you know? No, no, and it's crazy, isn't it? But that's, I remember when the iPhone came out and how quickly mm. the the concept of telecommunications just changed. And it was, honestly, it felt like a lifetime, but it actually was 18 months and all of a yeah, sudden exactly. everything had changed. And it's exactly the same with ChatGPT. And it but is the, the also... Is, no, sorry, you, you go. I was going to say it's also fascinating that you bring up the... Um, the idea of the iphone because that was we lived through the like wild west of the 2000s we were teenagers when companies were trying to figure out what the best mobile phone was like what we wanted mm -hmm. the most um and i think of it really like that the bizarre like it's like the cambrian period for like personal electronics right like we, it was just an explosion of weird stuff and flip flip phones this way and this way and like yeah. uh, just amazing, like, like taking a role on something it, it was communication, but it was art, but it was a product, but it had hope for the future. And they're also different and amazing. And then 
you cut to 10 years later and they're all just touch screens that are like three by like four, four inches, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and every generation, and I, and they, I, they go bigger one generation than the next generation. They're smaller. It's bigger and like, smaller. Uh, the other one is rounded yeah. and squared bevels. Like that's, uh, yeah. that's the main thing that iPhone changes. And they're like, Hey guys, the, there's more fo there's more cameras. I'm like, man, I, I can, I can take such a good, video or photo of anything on the earth except that not the moon yet but we're working on that um pretty soon well did you know samsung's within galaxy um software what they do is if you try and take a picture of the moon you zoom in it just overlays a picture of the moon really and says that that's a photo that. yeah is it that that's absolutely crazy. incredible because that's, that's the so thing cool. the moon only like and you're not gonna know which side of the moon you're meant to be looking at like what what <laughs> which, which uh which aperture angle of it so they're just like man but once they zoom in enough just put it put a dot on it put, put yeah. the thing on it um to, but to that, any any uh any clever people who might be watching that want to pick up on roger's language there yes we know that there's the dark side of the moon don't yeah, worry he, he meant what and direction what, you're looking at it from yeah exactly what angle we see it from um yeah. yes i know where there's, there's both sides um but you know yeah, what people on the uh, internet are like though i've i've seen some of them the fastest way to get <laughs> the correct answer is just willfully post like nonsense and i in the last don't... couple of months so for the first time in my life i'm using um x or Twitter. oh yeah okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway using, i um have using just Twitter, taken yeah. a bit of a like I know that I shouldn't, but I'm I'm enjoying being a bit of a troll for some some particular people. I actually um, well, yeah, it's uh, every it time is... Jordan Peterson posts something ridiculous, I jump on and call him JP, and I like yeah. it, it does give me a, a good amount of joy. It does, right? And this is the thing, and we've talked about cultural gods and cultural demons before, right? That aspect, like that, that's what now it is about. You even look at. I can't help but think that, that they just pointed to the guy in the room that that you know the soft the soft liberal uh, lower caste liberal high left in America hates the most, and then gave him like they're like, hey, you should you should buy our communication platform. It's just <laughs> trust me, it's going to be the funniest thing that could ever happen. And he's like, yeah, fine, that's yeah for sure. I, I am going to be a cultural demon. Very, very very funny situation. Well, this is a thing, right? And uh, like David Lynch says, he's like, we're not living in a great future, but we are living in an amazing time if you enjoy the theatre of the absurd. And it is just mm. absolute absurdity. And you do wonder how much of it is uh, sort of orchestrated from within, you know, media conglomerate and higher power, um, like uh, conservative powers at trying to maintain things through controlling narratives and stuff and how much it's really just just entropic humanity being taken advantage of <laughs> um because it's it's all crazy it's just crazy stuff man like well, that that idea of the theater yeah. of the absurd I, one of the things we wanted to talk about in the session today was you know, just kind of like for the people that might be watching this what it is that we're actually going to be talking about and, and we oh, almost okay. haven't, we almost haven't really figured that out our ourselves well, i'm really excited to i was going to say i'm excited to explore that because rather than it being like you only spoke to me the other day about this when we're talking about um uh ai companions and ai companionship and then sort of the the hard conversations that we have to have not just between each other not just within communities but with ourselves about what what necessitates humanity like what we what we want from mm. others in humanity and can we outsource like once again this is new tools just outsourcing part of the human experience so it's you know yeah. it's mechanical right like what w what do we want and and yeah what what is humanity like what parts of it are now not there that were before and how it's changing us like because and I was saying this, saying this to you before that we, depending on what your your beliefs and which lens you look at it through, humanity is is, is everything to us. Whether it's our consciousness, whether it's empathy, whether it's like just evolutionarily where we've ended up and how the things that we're prey to and the things that we're good to and how we adapt and how we adapt 
other things for us as humanity. And then some of the darker stuff, like how prone we are to um, in-group, out-group propaganda, just as social creatures and all that sort of stuff, right? It's, yeah. um, it, yeah, it's, uh, th so, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is that you and I are going to talk about, what it is that you wanted to talk about. When you say humanity, the things that have happened this week in humanity, what do you mean by that, Chris? I mean, for, for me, I always felt like we never finished the the conversation around consumerocracy. I felt like we okay. came up with a with a framework and we came up with an idea mm -hmm. that I felt, you know, in it, it was very bold at the time. That's I, in fact, I might put it up on the channel. You know what? Yeah, I, I think, I think you get. should. I think you should because it um yeah the amount of things that were very prescient and now almost seem obvious. It's always that thing, right? When you like when you uh, yeah. predict something or like put forward a framework for how the future might go um then when it happens people tend to be especially deconstructionists people who create yeah. stuff tend not to be as much like that because they know how hard it is to construct yeah. stuff but it's um, like, um it it's, seems you know, obvious I, that's a great great point like i know like, there's some intellectual examples but if you think about it from an art perspective which a lot of people can probably mm. understand People yeah, nowadays yeah. Listen, listen to the Beatles and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not comparing us to the Beatles in any way. What I'm saying is yeah, listen to should, the Beatles and uh, like a lot of younger people nowadays listen to be like, I don't get what the deal is. It just sounds like low quality music. Like we, this sounds like everything yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. Because like, yeah. literally everything else. Exactly. Ended up because in the that, life exactly. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Um, I think of, um your not investigative podcast but your conversational and humor based podcast and a lot of sitcoms that have come around since seinfeld uh seinfeld obviously has a massive cult following and larry david keeps working um and does curb and jerry seinfeld obviously just parcels out what he does so he's still sort of this mythos but yeah. seinfeld was just people like j just to Jewish dudes sort of ragging on stuff. And yeah. now we have literally, literally millions of groups of not just dudes, but like for the first like 10 years, it was just groups of dudes uh, just sitting around talking, just ra ripping on stuff. Yeah. Right. And which makes Seinfeld like people who don't like it are like, what is this? This is nothing. You're like, yeah, we, we've now, but it's yeah. been the basis for like an entire genre of like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't the, the reemergence of 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 radio, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I um, so that's that's my yeah, that's, that's my feeling is that like in particular, yeah. Look, I mean, uh, the other part of the of the channel at the moment is the Sentient Horizons podcast I'm doing with, mm -hmm. with Marina, which is very much looking at the future of well, how how AI is impacting humanity and how yeah, technology okay. is integrating with humanity. But yeah. one of the things that it very specialized that you and I have spoken about a lot is that impact of technology on governance and mm -hmm. in particular yeah, the future sure. of governance. And that's for yeah. me talking about what is, what is humanity, humanity, you know, I mean, look, that, that's a giant philosophical question that we don't need to spend too much yeah, time on. It's yeah. obviously it is groups of people who are bound together by something and that thing is generally governed. And so whether you, you know, if you look back at the 20th century, you see the governmental models change so rapidly after the fall mm. of like the traditional monarchist uh, yeah. and royal setups. And I do yeah. feel like we're in a very similar situation right now. You know, people, even, even just the obsession of the deep state in the US shows yeah. that the average person is noticing that there is a fundamental change in governance and there's a fundamental well, exactly. change. Exactly. That, and that, that uh, deep space, uh, not deep space, deep state, like <laughs> Q, um, QAnon sort of like, and even like it came from the flat earth like thing, but now anyone who's a little conspiratorial um, has, they've all sort of migrated over into that very fringe Q side um because they're right to think that something is wrong like our and yeah. i i see you see this like at least from the like from i feel like vietnam was a big one just because um that being like the media war and people being like oh wow so our, our government 
we maybe can't trust to do things in our interest as much as mm. we thought. And then the neoliberalism through the 80s of Thatcher and uh, Reagan and um, like the, and then also a massive one was the Catholic church. Like when people um, found out that, that there'd been, there'd been terrible uh, atrocities committed within like holy halls of power, like mm. not being able to trust our um the systems the inst our institutions our human institutions um yeah. and so you look back through that line and it's still happening now like it's happening more now than ever we're so confused like uh people like it's a joke we don't know about 9 11 we don't know about mh70 we don't know what happened to any of these things and someone yeah. knows like there's there's like the information is there we just can never access it. And there's also this destabilization, whether it's from other state players, destabilization of community and reality that we're just, um, oh, what's his name? He was a postmodern artist who became the, like basically propaganda guy for Russia about three years into Putin's reign, but he it has called the fire hose of um, false city or falsehood or something oh, like yeah. that where yeah. where you just fire images and ideas none of which are reliable in any way in with the reliable ideas and then eventually people just this is another thing the entire stream of information yeah and this is another thing you and i spoke about with the um with consumerocracy was the amount mm. of um false information or you know uh, misinformation based content that was put yeah. out there particularly by the Russians during the 2016 election, which well, exactly. is what has triggered us doing and the it's, series. And it's that, and it's that beautiful, um, perfect crime of saying, well, yeah, the people who are debunking us, how can you trust them? How can you trust the people who are saying it's from Russia and North Korea? And well, and that's, this is the thing, like, you know, fast forward at 12 crime. months after we did that series and it turned out a lot of the, uh, I mean, we were relying on on what we felt was factual information because it had been put exactly. out by yeah. by mainstream yeah. media organisations. Now a lot of it is is very much under question as to whether it's actually yeah, um, exactly it was real and, or not. And yeah, and this is the thing, right? We've also got to this point where because we're on the other side of that. Because arguably, I think I was reading an Atlantic thing, and they they called 2013 the year the internet broke. Um, and yeah. I feel it's more about 2015, 15, 16, like they feel like the dark, uncertain times. And I'm not sure if that's to do with other Well, do you remember factors. John Height when we saw him that, that he, 2013 was when he started measuring the trends of, um, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I feel yeah, like there's yeah. just kind of like this agreed framework that 2013 is where that conversation starts from. But I do yeah, agree well, with you. Is. Like if you look at 2015, 2016, it's basically yeah. around the Me Too movement is when you see like just the internet yeah, completely and that, change. Exactly right. And I think because I think of uh, there was also one year there where Reddit basically broke around Christmas and there was just this flood of like, and it might almost be generational, a flood of people who used to be on Facebook going to Reddit and people who didn't used to really be on the internet, especially older people going onto Facebook. And so yeah. th that couple of years there from 2012, and it's when Instagram started as well, because then some people went to Instagram um, and Snapchat was for young people, right? Like it was almost yeah. generational. They all just pushed back one. 100%. It's the first generational and growth of the internet. Yeah, exactly. Right. A hundred percent. And, uh, yeah. that basically when, and that's when the bulk of society was part of our social network, right? Like, cause once the, and it is so fascinating that like, and we've spoken about this as well, um, that the older members of our communities need more help navigating this than the young people. And mm. I think it's the first time other than like their physical decay or um, their mental decay, we haven't, we haven't usually had that. They're the parts we've had to worry about the aging members of our community, but now like it's sort of a fight for their minds because some of them rem like were kids without TV, man. Like, mm. and they are no way equipped to be able to, critically analyze the difference between what is real and what is not real, especially from 
people whose entire job is to analyze them and figure out the chinks in their mental yeah. armor, you know, to yeah. activate them. Yeah. And well, they're so the good at like, it. In, in Australia, I don't know what it's like in the US, but in Australia, you get fake SMS scams every day. Like they just I don't through. answer my phone anymore unless yeah. it's my friends or my girlfriend because it's it is always it's always a scam. A, yeah. a, a but the thing actor. is, it it must be effective for them to keep doing it. Exactly. Well, it's economics, isn't it? It's like it's, yeah. it's a pure market because it's illegal. The only reason they do it is because it gets results. Like that's. Yeah. Yeah, say what you want about black markets, but they are they are capital capitalist purity. They are great. Uh, or 100%. But this and this is my my point is that it, that has to demonstrate what it is that you're talking about because yeah, yeah. Is, it's, uh, it's got like, to be worth it, man. Yeah. Yeah, so so the thing is that you're absolutely right. This is this weird situation we're in right now, which is that the people who have traditionally been the most stable in our society in many ways now are the least stable because they're the most susceptible to negative actors within the society, which is which yeah, is historically totally. very unusual. And also there is that I, I wonder about the economic divide between those as well, like because we're mostly talking about middle class Western society because that's the society that we've um, experienced, right? Um, but I wonder where that level of it's sort of like uh, when you when everything's set, like I talk about the survival paradigm, right? Human middle class uh, humanity has gone past the survival paradigm. We survival is no longer our um, our prerogative. Our prerogative is comfort and maintaining well, no, the status quo. Physical right? physical survival is physical no survival. Yes, yeah. that's great as well because yeah. it's almost like life isn't just surviving that's yeah that's of course 100 percent. another yeah. deep philosophical uh ph philosophical well um but uh survival yeah past the survival paradigm and i wonder how much these people are basically um the generation before generation x that like mid-century um cohort especially because of how many there are because they we stop killing them after vietnam like we stopped sending them in sway um yeah. uh that there's so many of them and they're so they're well off enough they're not worried about mortgage they're not worried about they're the people who interest rates going up is fun that's good for them because they got a bunch of money just sitting there um they don't need to get home loans ever again maybe they worry about their kids but their kids will be okay you know yeah but, but i, I think wonder how much is it... a big thing of you like it's almost impossible for you to empathize with someone across that divide such a, yeah. well yeah in such a um alien situation like there's a lot of people yeah. in the baby generation in australia who just physically cannot empathize with the idea of you cannot actually buy a house no exactly it's too hard um and it's so funny that our generation gap um is so much more economic than any of them have been before like so many of them before were philosophical um and social differences and we have those as well but how um especially uh from the boomers to why skipping x in the middle like the difference in uh, economic standing just because basically before the hyper expansion of the eighties, like, and so many of those protections and worker protections that weren't there and dismantling of unions and all, all, all those things that make that yeah. have contributed to the economic um, situation that we have now. But I was saying that those people, cause they're past their physical survival paradigm and they have money. And also you're saying that they can't rightfully so that they can't empathize across that gap. Um, they go into the internet for trouble. They want to, mm. they want to complain. They want to find stuff to be mad about. And it feeds into itself because not being empathize, not being able to empathize across that line. This is why you have them yelling about avocados and us being like, man, I wish yeah. instead of being six years old in 1995, I was buying foreclosed houses from like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's so right. Yeah. We just. And the more, yeah, 
the divide, yeah. like any divide we have now, because it's so fascinating, the near tribalism of the internet, because we finally have, not finally, ideally, we maybe wouldn't have got there, but our communities aren't um, geographically based anymore, right? They're, they're ideologically based. And a few, which, in addition to that, you can be... A, I was going to say, it's one of the big things that I that I think you and I are going to speak about a lot in future episodes is yeah. that, is like, the, the fundamental, what what held dem democratic societies together was nationalism. Yeah. And that, 100%. Whether that's, a, yeah. whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's, it is the, the case. Now, yeah. as we move because away now we're, from... Yeah, we move away from a physical... Um, because you still exist within a physical um, community, but your connection to it, and you see this, like the the idea of villages raising children is gone. The idea that um, like your friends with your neighbours is gone. Like this is especially yeah. as we have um, within metropolitan li uh, metropolitan living, and I'm I'm based in Sydney and it has a reputation for being an unfriendly city, but most cities do. <laughs> like you're like yeah, oh yeah. it's a really it, yeah this war zone is really like horrific you're like yeah that's one of the <laughs> defining factors mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah just that that urban solitude is just so huge and the things that we now are trying to do so we're physically within our physical community we're more cut off and more cut off from others but we find more and more people um to be together with socially on the internet but the other yeah. thing about it's the other actually... main difference i uh, just quickly the other main yeah. difference is we're not exclusivity doesn't matter anymore you can be part of many many different groups and that mm. sort of that sort of um a, and they're so simple now because it'll be like they're fandoms they're like hey i heard you like football team a and you like television show uh two and this other mm -hmm. thing and you you only need to pick like five and that's that's all your community like um back and forth you ever need fulfilled man like you don't even the most like uh needy of uh extroverts that's plenty of people to find and uh where you have enough in common it's almost like when you're a kid i uh, can't remember who does the joke but it's like um Hey, I just met you. We're both kids. You want to be friends? They're like, yeah. And you're like, what's your favorite color? He's like, mine's red. He's like, mine's red too. You want to be best friends? And that's almost where we're at now because it's so our demographics are so important that as long as someone's, as long as you have, I'd say it's psychographics rather than demographics. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. If it is psychic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That you. It's so funny because you can have so little in common with someone else. And as long as it's part of a community that emphasizes that, um, that one or two particular aspects of your um, interests or personality, then you can be, you can all be this like group. Uh, yeah. But it's so easy to, in the same way, where we can find, we can find common ground with anyone. We only do it on our own terms. Um, and still yeah. have this well, massive uh, uh, like, divide between us. This, yes, so you're right. You can find common ground with anyone, but definitionally, in order to be part of a tribe, and particularly a neo tribe, yeah, you, you need have to have. Yeah, you have to have an outgroup, and that's like if yeah. you look at one thing that didn't exist in 2018 when we did this. Well, it existed, but it wasn't the most prevalent. prevalent. Yeah, um, is alternative media liberalism. You know, if, if you look at... Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, yeah. Dr. Carlson, for example, is a perfect example. He's Apparently, he's earning twice to three times what he was earning at Fox. And yeah, that's, sure. that's simply because he's able to exist and he has an entire liberalist community around him. Yeah. Look at guys like uh, Tim Pool. Anyway, that yeah. alternative media and the role of traditional media is one of the reasons that I want to do this with you because your background is obviously from media. Yeah. But yeah. we are at time. We so I think we'll leave it there. We're at time. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I was just going to say that um, exactly yeah. because that ties into the alternate. Um, uh, what they are is their alternate figures of authority. And what, and like I was saying at the beginning, 
the um, with our conservative institutions failing us, in addition to them failing us, what it's robbed us of more than those things, more than the complete like undermining of you know the things we can ever believe in, um, it's robbed us of our ability to have faith in institutions, which I believe, especially in America, I'm, it's not exclusive to there at all. It's all around um, your susceptibility to alternative authority. Um, yeah. Which is just well, this so... is the thing. Those, those alternative media figures have become the priests of the modern age. And well, they have that... exactly. And this even is the appeal of it, uh, of um, Donald Trump. This is the same thing, right? The appeal to saying, I'm not like the traditional. Um, and mm. then a bunch of crazy nonsense just like plucking at your like, uh, your dog whistle ears for in out groups and insecurities of. That's something we've got to talk about, which I know we we flagged on it uh, generally in, in consumeropracy, but yeah. the the idea of why people are so find change so appealing now, given mm. how like that that change is coming particularly from parts of the population that have historically been conservative. You know, like yeah, why exactly they, why do they want to change things? What has happened in the existing systems of governance that have failed so badly that change is an appealing situation exactly totally and even if and whether that's uh whether that's perceived um like whether it's the actual downfalls within those uh those power structures or whether it's perceived downfalls as well because they're not necessarily you don't it doesn't they're not mutually exclusive but they also don't necessitate each other either right and i think so much of it is perception because the more the more fringe you go the more you tend to find you're susceptible to more outlandish things right because there's only so many things you can see and hear that are that seem out of the realm of possibility that you find out to be real there's only so many times that can happen before you're almost open to anything and close to the idea that you'll ever understand. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Anyway, Rog. Yeah, yeah man. Thanks, thanks so much time. for having me on. It's, it's been really good. It's uh, turned yeah. out pretty good. We'll see yeah, looking go, forward man. to next week. Yeah, All thanks right, for having me, everyone. I'll see you next week.